Well, hey, Refuge. As you guys know, taking care of a pet is not an easy task, but it is a task that you and I can do together, and I think we can do it really well. And just so happens, I happen to come across a pet for us as a youth group to take care of together. Because let's be honest, this pet needs us as much as we need this pet. So we're gonna play a game. It's called Taking Care of My Pet Hedgehog. And you know what? I happen to come across an actual hedgehog for us to take care of the remainder of the school year as we meet for youth group. You guys wanna meet him? All right, check this out. Here he is. This is our hedgehog. This is our pet hedgehog. And so the first thing that we're going to do for this game this week, we got to name it. So there's going to be a number that's going to show up at the bottom of the screen. And I want you to text that number uh, a name for it. And here are our options. Option one, Poop Nugget. Option two, Sonic the Hedgehog. Or option three, Sir Ethan Gelberg. Okay. Be sure to text to the number at the bottom of the screen what you want to name this hedgehog. We'll find out next week what his name is. All right, let's, let's worship. We're going to sing Glorious Day. I was buried beneath my shame.
Refuge. Great to have you guys online with us again. Uh, tonight, I just want to talk real quick and give my thoughts around fear and shame. Uh, rather you follow Jesus or if you don't follow Jesus, we, we all experience fear and shame on some levels. You, you know why. I mean, you've seen this before. You get caught doing something that you weren't supposed to do. And what do you do? Uh, often, all of our responses, most of our responses would be to probably hide ourselves, to, to hide away from our friends, from our family, maybe from Jesus himself, but we like to hide ourselves becomes, because it becomes a protective measure. But here's the thing. I, I want to talk about fear and shame from a very uh, Jesus-centered perspective. So uh, 2 Timothy 1.7 says this, For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self discipline. So, I mean, already, like, we're seeing right here from Paul to uh, his friend Timothy that Jesus does not give us a spirit of fear, does not give us a spirit of shame. It's, it's not a natural part of his creation for us. It's a result of sin. But here's what I want to highlight on, because I think a lot of us are on the fence of saying yes to Jesus, but because we feel a sense of fear, feel a sense of shame, maybe for something that we've done in the past that we haven't healed from or worked through. I think a lot of us feel that Jesus is disgusted with us. But real quick, I, I just want to talk about two quick Bible stories with you um, to share God's heart, Jesus' love and kindness for you and me despite our shame. This is from Genesis 3.9. Then the Lord God called the man, where are you? Adam and Eve, they just messed up. They dropped the ball big time, and they hear God walking in the garden. And what do they do? They hide from God. They, they, they think that God cannot handle it, and so they have to hide themselves. Yet we see the exact opposite. God is calling to them. And then if we fast forward to Jesus himself in John 20, we, we read this. This is after Jesus' resurrection, by the way. She, that's Mary, turned to leave and saw someone standing there. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. It's right, because Jesus actually is the gardener, right? God created the garden. He spoke and it came to being. Sir, she said, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him and I will go and get him. Mary! Mary, Jesus says, she turned to him and cried, Rabbani, which means teacher in Hebrew. So we have these two stories where shame or fear are at play in these individual characters, and God is in pursuit of them. God is calling them by name. God is calling out to them. He doesn't want them to hide. And so we're seeing, I think, really clearly here that anytime we feel the inclination to hide ourselves, we know it's not from Jesus. I want to take a brief moment here and listen to my friend Carson Anderson and hear his story as he shares my story with you guys. Check this out. What's up, guys? My name is Carson, and today I would like to share a little bit of my story. So some of you don't know, but um, my dad is a pastor at Hope Community Church. And so growing up, uh, I went to church every Sunday. We talked about our spiritual lives at home. It was just a great, loving Christian environment as I grew up. And there are many positives to that. And But as I went into high school, um, around sophomore and junior year, I just got really busy, you know, sports and focusing on school. And so I kind of put my relationship with Jesus on the back burner, you know, kind of as a second thought kind of thing. And I noticed I started to get really negative about my outlook on life. I started to get really... I was always angry, I was not in a great mood, I was down on myself. So coming up on senior year, as I had to make college decisions and class decisions for the next year of high school, I just kind of decided that um, it might be a, a good time to maybe start building a stronger relationship with Christ, especially as these big decisions start coming up. As soon as I started praying more often and getting into God's Word and just putting him in the front of my mind during school or while I was thinking about all the things that were coming up in my life, I just noticed like my whole outlook on the world had changed. I began to be much more grateful for all the things around me and the things that I've been given. 
my attitude was so much more positive. I just felt a whole lot better about my circumstances. And I just felt more joy, more gratitude. I felt kinder to people. And so if you can take one thing from what I've learned over the past few years, is that if you're down on yourself, if you're low, if you're not in a great spot, if you turn to Jesus, He paid the sacrifice for your sins. And so no matter what, He's going to come back into your life. So if you can learn one thing, it's just put Him first in your life, and I guarantee you He changes the way you view everything. Maybe He doesn't change your circumstances. Maybe He doesn't change any things that are going on in your life. But I guarantee you, you will find the positives that you have been given, and you will find a joy in Him. You know, I, I think the thing we can take away from this is this. Rather than hiding from ourselves, rather than hiding ourselves from shame, what if we began to lean into it? Here's what I mean. Jesus is not disgusted by your shame. In fact, Jesus is calling you by name. I think rather than try to hide ourselves, rather than try to run away, what if we did the opposite? What if we leaned into it? What if we approach Jesus as we are, maybe in shame, maybe feeling guilty, maybe fearful, but what if we approach him as is? What do you think he would do? You know, I, I think from Adam and Eve's story, you know, the, the first sin that's recorded, I think we know that God is still calling us back to him. I think with Mary, when she thought her Lord was missing, when she thought his body was gone, she was fearful for, for his body. Well, we see Jesus is still calling her by name. So my, my encouragement for you, as we've read some quick stories, as we've heard Karsten's story, if you are on the fence with Jesus right now, and, and if you feel some level of shame, and that's holding you back from saying yes, would you just pray to Jesus? Would you just talk with him and just let him know how you feel? Because right now, Jesus is calling you by name. Thanks, guys.